It generates 430 watts and produces around 500 kWh of electricity annually using cells on both the front and back. That corresponds to roughly 150 euros in savings. Everything I just mentioned is only what it generates in the daytime. Because when night falls, the sun's rays don't really disappear. They are simply reflected by the moon. That's why we see the moon at night giving off a little light. We can always see there is always light. And if there is light, theoretically, with a powerful enough solar panel, we could capture some energy and produce electricity. Here, I have this new panel from Endure connected to the application, and I can see exactly how much it produces. And now, before seeing how much this latest generation panel can produce at night, we first need to understand how they work. Technical videos are available in the description. I'm going to try to simplify all this because you're too stupid. Solar panels are made up of two layers of silicon. To make silicon, we're going to have to react sand-rich in quartz with carbon, often derived from coal. So, it's a bit ironic, but solar panels start their life thanks to coal. The sun's rays are filled with tiny particles of energy that we call photons. Imagine them as tiny projectiles zooming straight towards our solar panels. When these photons hit the panel, they strike the silicon atoms and dislodge electrons. These electrons move and create an electric current. That's the photovoltaic effect. It's a theoretically infinite loop, but it's going to lose about 0.5% power each year. That's why solar panels are generally guaranteed to work for about 40 years at 80% of their capacity. The current produced by the photovoltaic effect only goes in one direction. This is what we call direct current or direct current. This is excellent for powering a battery. But the devices inside our house need alternating current, also called alternating current. The advantage of alternating current is that unlike direct current, it can travel very long distances. To convert direct current into alternating current, we will have to make it oscillate. Fortunately, the device that enables this function is appropriately named an inverter or microinverter. Here, in my hands, I have the Solar Flow 800, the latest microinverter from Zendur, which can accommodate up to two 600 watt solar panels each on MC4 connectors. And then it will invert the direct current from the panel to transform it into alternating current. I just need to plug this into the house to power all my devices without issues. Zendure launched this product in February 2025 as part of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization partnership. And they are betting heavily on a new low voltage startup technology which would allow the inverter to produce electricity even with low light. The new solar panels are now bifacial. That means they have photovoltaic cells on the front but also on the back to capture the reflections of light on the ground. As we were saying earlier, the moon acts a bit like a dirty mirror that reflects some of the sun's rays. Since the solar panel is capable of capturing the photons that bounce off the ground with its cells at the back, and that the microinverter has the technology to produce electricity, even at low light, couldn't we capture the light photons that bounce off the moon to produce electricity? Let's return to the main question. How much electricity does this solar panel generate at night? Here, I'm on the app, I see in real time that I'm at zero W. Here, the panel is producing absolutely nothing and everything is well connected. It's a bit strange because two LED panels are lighting up the entire scene. I can see Baptiste very well, my phone, it's making light. The sun is still reflecting in the moon. Overall, there is light. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to see the camera and talk to you. So, how come I'm at zero watts? Why can't the photons excite my silicon? To start with, what you need to understand is that out of 100% of the light that arrives, we're going to lose about 30%. Due to reflection, 47% will turn into heat and only 23% into electricity. Knowing that the more the panel heats up, the less efficient the cells are. And then we're gonna lose a few more percent in the inverter and in the cables. 
even if we plug in a 28 watt LED panel and put it right in the face of the solar panel on the application, I see that I'm producing zero watts. Even a large solar panel can't produce a single watt of electricity. So if I had hooked up a multimeter behind the solar panel, maybe I could have seen a few watts produced. But anyway, the inverter, even though Zendo has implemented a technology where it activates even at low light, in fact 28 watts, it's too low to even activate the microinverter. So the answer is clear in the middle of the night, even if you have all sorts of reflections from the sun on a full moon. It's impossible to produce even a single watt, it's not profitable. Despite this failure, scientists are really working on panels that could work without sun, but it has nothing to do with photovoltaic cells. These triboelectric panels would rather use a phenomenon we all know, static electricity. The goal would be to capture the static electricity created by the raindrops falling on the panel. Multiply this tiny electric charge by millions of drops and you get an electric current instead of a charge. Today, these panels do not produce enough energy to be profitable, but it works. Notably, there is an even more intriguing solution for obtaining electricity at night. This solution is revolutionary. I have it here and will present it to you. It's called a battery. Yeah, not just any lithium battery. This is a lithium iron phosphate battery. I will explain in a moment why this is important. I'm not going to go into the technical details of how a battery works, but it's quite interesting to see that these new lithium iron phosphate, lithium iron phosphate batteries are widely used to store energy from our solar panels, but also in our electric cars. And that for several reasons, Firstly, they have a very long lifespan of about 6,000 charge and discharge cycles, which is between 15 and 20 years of use, with about one recharge per day. Secondly, they do not use any rare metals or heavy metals, such as nickel, cobalt or manganese, which have a heavy social and ecological impact. And thirdly, the chemistry of lithium iron phosphate is much more stable. It doesn't explode or catch fire, but it can thermally run away, heating up intensely. If it's stuck to a wooden wall, it can cause a problem. But the new batteries, like the AB2000S from Zendo, incorporate a fire extinguishing system that further enhances safety. The solar flow. 800 microinverter not only allows to send the energy from the panels to the battery, then to the house, but also to do the reverse, to draw energy from the grid to recharge the battery. This allows, for example, to buy and store energy during off-peak hours and then use it during peak hours to make the installation even more profitable. So for now, despite major technological innovations in solar panels and microinverters, it is still not possible to produce electricity when there isn't much sun like today. At best, there would be wind turbines, which can produce electricity even at night. We will discuss this further in a future video. But even in that case, it is necessary to have batteries if we really want to have energy in a stable and continuous manner. There are tons of very interesting systems. Interesting. We have tested many of them on this YouTube channel and we will test many more. So subscribe so you don't miss them. I have two indoor systems running simultaneously at my place. The first one. It's two solar panels connected to the SolarFlow 800 and to two AB2000S batteries. This allows me to produce enough energy to power my internet box, my fridge, my freezer and all the devices that are always on. In other words, the consumption heel. The second system is four AB2000 batteries connected to a Hyper2000 inverter, which I have already tested on this YouTube channel if you're interested. I could also connect four solar panels on it but I mainly use this system to buy electricity during off-peak hours and reuse it during peak hours. My subscription offers off-peak hours at 16 cents and peak hours at 30 cents, which is quite interesting. 